What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodingBee.com and in this video, I'm going to show you a hack to make individual widgets transparent with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video we're going to look at making individual widgets transparent. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos to teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership, that's all my courses, videos, and books, for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Alright, it is a beautiful Monday morning here in Vegas, hope you guys had a good weekend. I had a pretty good weekend, did a little hiking, got lost, managed to find my way home, and here we are again. So last Friday, we looked at making an entire app transparent. And at the time I told you it was all or nothing. So if you use the method we used last Friday, everything's going to be transparent. And you can't use that method to make individual widgets transparent. Now, there is a way that you can sort of hack around a little bit to make individual widgets transparent. And that's what we're going to look at in this video. So I've got this app here. I've got a frame you'll notice that is transparent. You can see through it, right? So if I drag this around, you can see the stuff underneath it. Now I've got some text inside of here that's not transparent. So you can make that text transparent too or not, right? Uh, here, I've got a button that's transparent, right? And you can kind of click this and it kind of works. If you click off the text a little bit, the whole app disappears because your, your cursor is like going through the transparent thing, right? Same thing if you come up here and click like right here in the frame, it goes through the app and your app disappears and you can pull it back up because it's still there. But uh, if you click here on the text, you'll notice it doesn't do that. So this is a very kind of hacky method. It kind of works okay and it kind of doesn't as you can see there's some quirks to it. And that's what we're gonna look at in this video. So I've got a file open called alpha2.py. Last week we worked with alpha.py. So I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. And this is what we used last week, this root.attributes alpha, and we set the, uh, the transparency to 0.5. If I save this and run it, you see this is like what we looked at last week. You get the whole thing is transparent. And maybe you want that, maybe you don't. So we're gonna go ahead and just comment this out. Back over to our code. Now, the method we're gonna use is something called WM attributes. And WM stands for Windows Manager. So I'm not even sure if this works on Mac or Linux. You can give it a try. But it this handles, this will deal with just the root widget, right? So your root widget, your your root window, right? This TK instance, or other top level windows that you open, it'll work on. So that sounds a little weird because we're gonna make individual widgets transparent, not the whole window. Why am I talking about the whole window? Well, that's where the hack comes in. Let me just code this out and show you. So we're going to go root dot WM underscore attributes. Now we can set different attributes, Windows Manager attributes for our window. And one of those is dash transparent color. And then we can set any color we want. Let's just say red. All right? you can use hex color codes, you can use red, I'll show you a couple other things you can do just calling the background color, whatever that is. We'll look at all these. So what this will do is this says, hey, anything in our entire app that is red, make it transparent, right? So that's where the hack comes in. We're not gonna make the widgets transparent. We're just gonna make anything that has a red background transparent, right? So we can create a frame. Let's go uh, my underscore frame. And that's gonna be a frame. We wanna put it in root. And let's give this a width of like 200 and a height of like 200. And let's give this a background color of like blue, just so we can see it right now, right? So, okay, let's my underscore frame dot pack this guy. And let's give this a pad Y of 20, just to push down the screen a little bit. And we can go ahead and run this now. And we see, okay, we've got this big blue box, right? This is a frame. It's 200 by 200, whatever. So it's blue, right? We've told our Windows Manager attributes to make everything red transparent. So let's change this to red. Save this. And now if we run it, we see now this whole thing is transparent, right? So that's really all there is to this. And it's not that sophisticated. It just takes anything with a background color of red, and it makes it transparent. Now, you're thinking, well, what if I have other widgets that I actually want to be red? Well, then make it a different color right? Make it any color you want. Uh, we can go to Google and just type in hex color codes. 
uh, just find any hex color code picker, right? And, you know, just, and this is not a great one. Let's find one with a color wheel, right? So we can pick any weird color that we want that no other widget is gonna be using. So you could call like this color right here. So if I just copy this, come back over here. And if instead I went like that and like that, hex color codes always start with a hashtag, save this and run it. We get the same thing, right? So just pick some weird, you know, obscure color that no other widget is gonna have if that's your problem, right? So, okay, we could play around with this. We can do all kinds of things. We could put stuff in this frame. So let's create a label. Let's go my underscore label. And it's gonna be a label. And we wanna put it in my underscore frame. And we want the text to equal hello world. And let's not make any kind of background color. So now we can go my underscore label dot pack. And let's give this a pad Y of 20. And let's make our frame, let's give it an iPad Y of 20 and an iPad X of 20. So that the things inside of it have some padding as well, just to separate these things a little bit. So let's go ahead and run this guy again. And we see, you know, it just says hello world inside of here. The text is very small, but we can still see it's not transparent at all, right? So, if you wanted to make that transparent, you could just by setting the color to whatever we've called our color to be transparent, which is this weird color now. So we could go BG equals some quotation marks, save this, run it. Right. So now that that color is sort of around it. It's kind of really hard to read this. If we bring it over here. You can see it still says hello world in green because the color of the surrounding kind of bleeds into it a little bit. So that's a little weird, right? Um, I'll show you how to get around that if you like. We could also change the color of the text itself. We could give this like a foreground color of white. And if we wanted to make this bigger, we could go Helvetica and like I don't know, size 16 or something. Save this and run it. All right, so now the text is white, but it's still sort of bleeding green into it a little bit because that's our color, right? So one way you could sort of get around this if you need to is when you come back here, when you designate, when you designate the transparent color, instead of making it an actual color, we can just go root and then pass in whatever the background is of our root, right? So here, if we save these as whatever these colors are and run it, we're not gonna get transparency, but the entire widget or the entire app is now gonna be transparent because it's gonna take whatever the background color is of our app and make it transparent. Uh, we could further tinker with this by getting rid of these background colors here. Get rid of this one and this one. We'll keep this foreground as white. Run this again. All right, so now everything is transparent except for the, <laughs> the text that's white here. And you can see I clicked somewhere on that and the whole thing disappeared because it's all transparent. My cursor shoots right through it to the underlying underneath app that's running. So like I said, this is a very hacky, weird thing, but it does kind of work. So if you need a specific widget transparent for a specific reason, uh, I don't know why, if you have a little frame with a logo and you want the frame to be, whatever, like you guys know what you want. If you need some widget to be transparent, this will work strictly speaking. Uh, this whole, making the whole thing transparent like that is not that cool. But if you need it for something, that will work. <laughs> and uh, kind of cool. So, you know, so often with Kinter to do interesting things like this, you have to kind of hack around with it. That's just because Kinter is a little bit older and it's not as modern of a, a GUI system as some other things that we're going to be looking at in the future, things like Kivi and things like that. But, you know, a lot of times we can get done things we need to get done if we're just kind of creative. Remember, we're talking WM attributes, which is, stands for Windows Manager. Again, I haven't tested this on a Mac. 
Um, I should probably do that. Where's my Mac? I think it's in the other room. But it's, uh, you can play around with it and see. I have no idea if it's going to work on Linux or not. I don't think I have a Linux system bopping around anywhere. I can throw one up on a virtual machine and test it, or I'll let you guys test it out and let me know. So that's fun. So anyway, that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses now, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.